Good afternoon folks. We were out in the greenhouse today doing a little housekeeping type stuff and it occurred to me I am way past due in giving you an update video on what we've got going on. As you can see here we now have the structure the A-frames in for growing vertically and they're over the two middle boxes and all of our vertical crops are going to be grown there. We are past the worst part of our winter weather. Of course we're in April. We still have a couple of weeks I think until our average last day of frost. The outside temperatures have come up enough that I had to take the plastic, the inner pl sidewall plastic off to allow us to vent heat. Even with the 40 to 50 degree temperature it was getting well above 100 degrees in here pretty quick as soon as the sun would come out. So we took those side pieces off to allow us to open our sidewall curtains and to vent heat. All of our boxes are full with sand and sawdust and we have just about everything transplanted or we have seeds in and they're coming up now. So our greenhouse is just about full for the spring and summer. Some of this stuff will end up coming out in the fall and of course they like the cabbage and the broccoli and cauliflower will put a second fall crop in after all of that is harvested. But the greenhouse for all intents and purposes is full and, and it's growing. I really don't have any new information about the heat sink portion of the greenhouse. We made it through the winter. Of course I didn't have it done in time to actually have anything growing out here this winter. Don't have any new information for you there. I am very confident however that we are going to be able to significantly extend our growing season for the frost intolerant type crops like our tomatoes and the hardy crops like the stuff here in the box on the left, the cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower and kale. Uh, spinach is over on the other side. I think there's actually, yeah, there's carrots over here on my left too, but that type of stuff, I have no doubt that we're going to be able to garden in here year round. It may require the second little miniature hoop house, and that's what this arch is. There. I put that up the entire length if you missed my previous video and I will have a little mini hoop house inside of the greenhouse and that would keep all this stuff alive even on those nights when our greenhouse is getting down below freezing. With that in mind any videos out here in the greenhouse in the foreseeable future is going to be just a, a regular greenhouse video there's not going to be any wonderful new information and you're not going to see anything along those lines until this fall when it starts to turn cold and we start to button this thing back up. We're still not done with the greenhouse. We still need to do a few things out here to get ready for our fall and winter garden. I need to bury the electrical conduit. It's a gray PVC and run power out here. I'm currently using an extension cord run from the house and I need to get that out of here before I start to mow. We'll get that buried and we'll get our outlets put in. We're not going to put any lights in here. I don't think I'm going to be out here at dark or after dark. So we're not going to put any lights in. We're just going to put a minimal amount of outlets in here to meet the needs of what we actually have got to have out here. Now that's going to be a blower for the heat sink. The fan that you can hear running over my shoulder that inflates the plastic on the canopy. I'm going to have an outlet on the far end of the greenhouse where we will eventually have an automated waterer system set up to power it. I'm also going to have a table set up down there eventually which we have to build still but I'm going to have a grow light or the ability to put a couple of grow lights down there and do my seedling production out here in the greenhouse. It would be fantastic to grow everything out here not have to carry stuff up and out of the basement and bring it out here it's all right here. I do need to fill in the far end of the greenhouse. You can see 
a pile of sawdust back there. I'm using that or will be using that to kind of level out that end of the, the greenhouse. It settled a little more on that end so I'm going to fill it back in, level it out and uh, make it look make it look good. Okay, really that's about all that I've got. I'm, I'm pretty tickled to have the greenhouse full finally uh, with the exception of the I had a mishap with nitrogen and killed off a whole bunch of my tomatoes, about three quarters of them, as seedlings down in the basement. So I've got an open spot right there after that last tomato. And their replacements are growing down there on that seedling tray. I've got tomatoes for me and asparagus for my mother that's growing in that seedling flat there. But the rest of the greenhouse is full. We've got seeds that are coming up for the stuff that we didn't transplant in and uh, I'm pretty happy. It's nice to see something in here and it's nice to be finally growing something. And I'm looking forward to this winter when we're going to be able to test this thing and see what it's actually capable of doing in our climate. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down here, get this edited down so I don't sound like a fool and uh, get it up for you all to see. As always, if you have any questions about the greenhouse that we've got here and our heat sink system, I'm more than happy to try and answer them for you. If you ask in the comment section, or you might have more luck if you find us on Facebook. And I say us because I'm a part of the group, but it's the Mitlider Gardening Facebook group. There's, oh, I think roughly about 800 members in it now. You will need to get approval to get into it, but just mention that you're interested in the Mitlider gardening method and one of the administrators will get you approved and in the group. Alright, that's it. Uh, Y'all have a great weekend.